we've added some options of our product on our on the right side over here categories and such so let's look at these other ones available in the center uh, so we've got variations um, and the thing with variations is it needs kind of set up it's it's complex ish the first time we do it so we're, I'm gonna wait on variations but variations will be very cool because this, this is my idea for this shop I'm gonna sell cookies and I want to sell cookies uh, three at a time, six at a time, twelve at a time. So those are going to be variations. They're all going to be chocolate chip cookies, but I want to sell them in batches of three, six, or twelve. Those are going to be variations. We'll get to that because uh, we could do a variation here, but not not yet. Delivery, product delivery. We have the shipping option turned on in the settings, so this applies to all products. All products will have shipping information. Here we can turn it off. This particular product will not have shipping information. Or I can set individual shipping costs here. On my settings, I said there everything is going to have a flat rate of $3. But maybe actually this one needs ten dollars so you can set that and add a weight if you do decide to use the option on the settings screen of ship by weight well you then will need to set a weight for your product so that it properly calculates it for you under the shipping section you've also got download click on download this is where you can set up digital downloads. So if you're selling ebooks, if you're selling music, MP3s, if you're selling uh, PowerPoint uh, lectures, if you're selling digital products, they will be attached right here. Under the download section, you add some files. And therefore, when a person buys this particular product, they will get a link to download this, this file, but you're going to need to upload it on this screen here. And then external link. Let's say for some, for whatever reason you, you cannot fully sell a product from your own site. You still sell it on Etsy or Amazon or something. Here what you can do is add the link to that particular product on the other external website. And then there will be a button that says buy now or it'll say visit Amazon or whatever you want it to say and then so what happens is uh, it will the user will go from your site to that other site to finish buying the product and so if you do use external under target I would suggest you use force open in a new window what will happen is that your product will open in a separate window to see it on that other website because if they go to the other website, let's say Amazon, they buy your product there and then they keep wandering around on Amazon. They forget about your site. But if you make this open on a separate window, once they're done with Amazon, then they'll still be on your site. And I've had to do this at least one time for a client. He was selling books. He was a self-published author. And he had a bunch of them printed in his garage. So he had physical ones to sell. And then he had also digital ones that he was selling at various e-retailers. So some of the products were bought directly from his site because he just went to the garage and packed them up and shipped them. And others were digital products or uh, print-on-demand, so they had to be directed over to the external link to the other website. So, yes? So, um, for example, if it's an online ebook, mm -hmm. you can do the download sections that that'd be the best place exactly your ebook uh, depending on your format you know PDF or what are the other formats uh, dot whatever so your your digital book yes you just upload it here and then that's that's where you sell it there's no real way to protect you know, maybe not no it depends on the kind of book you have uh, these uh, more advanced ebook retailers like Amazon include an extra feature called DRM, Digital Rights Management, which is supposed to lock your book from changes and alterations and redistribution. But built into it with this, this basic thing here doesn't have it. I don't doubt 
that there's another plugin that we can get to add DRM to your to your uh, to your books and such. But unfortunately, I'm sure it, there's always a way to to crack these things. Yes. If, what if your product that you're downloading um, is really big and it's a, we we'll call it a long download time? Can, can you do it like a, a DMV or, or some type of yeah, you can you can upload here the compressed version. Um, you instead of having the full 100 megabyte thing and you compress it down to a zip or a DMG and it's only 25, that's doable too. You can have compressed files here. You would just need to make sure you, in your explanation or in your email or somewhere, tell the people this is a compressed file. On Windows, right click and do this. On Mac, control click and do that. So it'll also make it obvious. Okay. And, and make a very friendly link, like if you were to sell videos, that's where you would add the content? Maybe. External links is definitely, when someone clicks that button by now, it'll, it'll take them to that other website. So you could still sell videos right here through download. You upload your video here. But let's say you set up, you set up private videos or private presentations on SlideShare. Dot net and you're selling them. So here then I would put it in. I would put the link to that particular slide share. They would click buy now and then they would go to that private link where they could access it. And you can say video, you said last time YouTube could have like private access or yeah. Vimeo? Uh, yeah, YouTube definitely. Vimeo, I have to confirm it, but I'm pretty sure they've got private access as well. So once they pay, they get access to the videos. So yeah. You can actually have them stay in your site. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. Okay, a few more things here. Product details, image gallery. Depending on your theme, um, and this plugin also, if you get the gold cart, you can have multiple image galleries. So instead of just one picture, you know, I've got this one picture attached to my product, I can set up this gallery so that I can have more than one picture to show of my product, different sides, different angles of the product, let's say. But usually what I would do for clients is I wouldn't use the image gallery because you have the ability right here under the main editor right here to add, to add media and then you've got this sort of gallery that I like better. So let me show that again. The gallery that is down here, part of the plugin, I don't recommend it too much. I would recommend the gallery that you can use through the regular WordPress editor when you click Add Media, Create Gallery. Once you start adding pictures to the gallery, you'll get a bunch of more options that I think are more interesting. And then, of course, you can have, for example, Visual Composer or some other WordPress plugin that helps you create even more interesting galleries. Depending on the theme, we have short description. So again, you don't know, how does this actually look like? So I would just add here, this is a short description so that I can, so that I can see it on screen. I won't know what it looks like exactly until I publish it. So I'll just add something there and it, it should appear on screen somewhere. personalization. Users can personalize this product by leaving a message on a single product page. That's nice. If you turn that on, like for this birthday cake, I would love it to be personalized. So it says, Happy Birthday, Billy. Without this, then it's just going to be a birthday cake with Happy Birthday blank. So depending on your product, this might be useful, giving people a spot for them to personalize. This is not as 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 customizable as you would want because I would want it to say add child's name here this is just on or off but what you could do is back up on the description say add child's name in the box below in the box provided because it might be above or below depending on the theme so here within the description that's going to be visible to people and that's going to direct them to in this little box, fill in the 
child's name. Yes. The description again at the top where the toolbar is. Uh, there's an icon there, right there, right top row, right, all the way under the right. One more, one more, like that, that one, one. I know which one you mean, yes. The WPEDESC. Let's talk about that icon very soon because it's a very powerful icon uh, that has a lot of features. We'll get back to it. And then um, we also have the ability for people to upload a picture. So think about that. This is a birthday cake, and they want, uh, and, and the child wants a particular picture of their uh, of their favorite cartoon character or something to be uploaded. Okay. Well, caveat here. This will allow people to upload a picture, any picture, any stolen picture. So you should put then some sort of disclaimer in the description up on top that says, uh, please do not upload copyrighted material, it will not be accepted, only original photos please, etc. Didn't that they could upload pictures to your website and can be everybody can see this? Thing? No, this will be attached to that particular customer's purchase product. So only that person that uploads that picture of, of their cat will see that, not, not everyone. Yeah, for fun, we can turn it on, we'll see how it works. And so that uh, will allow people to upload a product um, and it'll be added to the purchase log, so then you will see this person bought this cake and they uploaded this photo, so now I need to put this photo onto that cake. Can I see the short description? Oh, I just put something here that says, this is a short description, so I can see what it looks like when I okay. see it on the theme. And then metadata is very powerful, but there's like no description on how to use it. Usually you're going to skip this because this is uh, much more advanced features. Metadata, let's say we needed a way uh, to also have a person add some sort of extra text or a way for a person to choose this product plus this other product. Let's say if you were going to buy uh, the birthday cake, you also had to buy birthday candles. They needed to be linked together. One way to be would be to use the metadata, but this is pretty complex because we'd have to write some sort of uh, code to link the two products together. Oftentimes JavaScript code, maybe PHP code. Very advanced. I'm not going to get into it because this is custom. I had have I have had to do it for clients and I had and I have had to work with clients that already had this set up and I had to understand what did the previous developer do. It's going to be pretty complex. But if you know what you're doing to create your own custom meta fields here, it can, you can create pretty powerful product selling features. And there's a link, the post meta API. That's documentation. How does it work? But it's very technical. So for most of you, you won't need to work with metadata. But sometimes, depending on your theme, you automatically get some meta fields filled in. So then the answer to that is read the manual of your theme or your plugin. It should help explain how that works so that you can get the most out of it. Okay, um, so I think I've uh, filled in everything I wanted about my product. Uh, any questions so far? The variations we will get to more complexly when we talk about the cookies. Selling cookies. Um, what about coupons? Okay, uh, that one I'm going to talk a little bit later also that has its own screen where we can set all of that up. Yes? Quick question. I went out to uh, Pixabay and found that image. How did you ask me to find it? Sure. 
when you've got your product here, you should see featured image, and it should say set featured image. When you click on that, uh, do you see then upload file? And then you're going to select file, and then find your picture. It's probably on your desktop. It might be in the downloads folder, but check the desktop. And then once you've selected it, let's see here. Once I've selected it, once I've selected it, then you want to set the featured image, bottom right. So I think my product is ready to go. I'm going to publish it. Go back to the top right and click publish. And after it publishes, let's see what it looks like. I've got my first product. What does it look like to the customer? So make sure you've published it and then go back to visit site. Visit site and then we'll go to products page, which we'll rename later. Just click on products page. Now there's one product, birthday cake. If there's any way to get rid of that square around the picture? Not, not with the settings that they give us, but with a little bit of code editing, we could. We will talk about code editing. Um, that's always the best way. Oftentimes with a question about, can we do this, can we do that? Oftentimes the answer is yes and no. No, if it, there's no button for us to do it, but yes, if we edit the code. So I'm looking at my product. I put my, my mouse over the picture. I get a magnifying glass. I click on it. There's the thick box, or the color box, whichever one I said. So it becomes kind of big. It looks pretty cool. There's the description. Add child's name in the, in the field provided. More details. Oh, more details is the short description. Quantity product is in stock because I chose to have that um, I chose to have that option set price what's the shipping at cart average customer rating nothing there so far you can say this is a five star so this is basically the the preview of the product Try clicking on the on the title, the product name. When you click the product name, I see a nice big version of the picture. Same picture, birthday cake. I see at the top here, breadcrumbs, birthday cake, inside of cakes, inside of products page, inside of the bakery description, there's the thumbnail again, which I can zoom into again. Description, oh, short description is put here now, a little different. Personalize your product. Uh, okay, it does say personalize. Complete this form to include a personalized message. So maybe I don't need to say add child's name in the field. It says that. The question is, can I change the, can I change what that says? Yes and no. If there's no specific spot in the dashboard to change this? No. But yes, if you edit the code. So we'll, we'll touch back on that again. There's a spot for me to add, say, Happy Birthday, Johnny. Upload a file. So, okay, I like the product. I'm going to click Add to Cart. <laughs> so hopefully you see then this, this pop-up. Which is not the is not the prettiest, but it says you just added a birthday cake to your cart. Go to checkout. Continue shopping.
on your menu on the left under products, remember we've got uh, the drop down here, your account, transaction results, checkout. If you go to your menu on the left and then click on checkout, I have this product, description, how many do I want, price, total, I can remove it, what's tax, and then here the, the form to purchase. Remember last week we talked about that, that form, it's asking first name, last name, address, etc. And then it's saying same as billing. That's good. So once I fill out the billing part, a person can fill in the shipping part. Uh, or vice versa. Once they fill in the this this part here, they'll they can fill out the other. So this is how you can direct you can ship it to a certain place or bill to a different place. When we were editing the 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 form there was a spot in there that I added extra Twitter name. Remember that? And then the terms and conditions. This is required. If I try to purchase it, it's going to tell me, of course, please agree to the terms. Yes? Can you just remove the machine? Is there a way, seeing what's kind of like this for a page of paper? Well, mine updates not all the way across. It's broken up like up that. Yes. This is going to depend on your theme. Uh, Our particular theme is not that nice. So it kind of looks weird, and it's got. Yeah. So depending on the theme, if we change to a different one, it might be it might show up better. Uh, this is one of the things that we don't have a lot of control on the design of this, unless we edit the code. So if we edit the code, we would be able to to change some of these things, and and I'll talk about this when we get to it, but. Um, We'll get to it later, but we could do, you know, like that quantity was cut off. And I did some quick editing in code, then now it's no longer cut off. So I'll talk about this. Right now I kind of did it quickly, but we'll be able to edit this so that it uh, looks a little nicer. Yes? How did you uh, link the uh, birthday to the products? It should be automatic. Make sure you've published it because when you go to products page, it should show you any products that you've published right away. You shouldn't have to do anything extra. So if we... Um, if we were in this checkout screen and we filled all of this stuff out, then we would have purchase. And then that would then initiate the PayPal, the PayPal feature. So I'm going to touch on PayPal a little more a little later. But PayPal, once it's once your PayPal account is plugged into this, then you'll be, you'll be able to accept payments. You'll be able to start collecting money on your products. So I can't show you the full checkout process, but uh, let's add a few more products to see what we need to know about that. Any questions so far? How many of you got this to work? Good. Anyone need a little help with anything? No, that's not. 
let's look at the problems. This is needed to remember to turn it on the speed like that. Because it's trying to find a. It's, we have a pretty kernel mix. We have a kernel mix that has the full name and the address. And we start to make a song and it's pretty shaky. So that, that, uh, that, that, that thing right there has to be. Okay, let's add another product. Uh, let's add another product. Let's a uh, basic one, then we'll add one with variations, and then we'll do other complex stuff. Let's add another product. I've got birthday cake, but now let me add um, key lime pie. Let's add a pie. So if we if we're on the dashboard, uh, I'm sorry, if we're on the front end, if we're on visit site, remember we have the shortcut new and we have product. So let's do it that way. I'm on I'm I'm visiting the site. So if you hover over new, we can click product. This is going to be key line pie. So I did a cake and I'm gonna do a pie. Say 12 inch uh, pie with organic key lines. product tag I thought of here organic so uh, other things that I might sell that have an organic ingredient would be nice to be tagged as organic and it's gonna be in the category obviously of pies set featured image let me give you a chance. You fill this out however you would like. Put an image, put some prices, or whatever you'd like. So create a brand new pie product and publish it. And then we'll and then we'll see what extra tricks we can do. So just go ahead and publish one more product. I'm not seeing the uh, product tags on my on my on the website. Product yeah. tags is not visible. I've 
I'm seeing it now. Okay, so hopefully you've published a brand new product and it should look like this. So I'm going to go to the products page and under the products page I've got the birthday cake and then I've got the key lime pie. So I've got two products. I've got two products and they both show up on that same products page. That's the default behavior. All products will show up on the products page. Depending on your product, that's fine. But for mine, it's going to get cumbersome pretty quickly because I'm going to have a bunch of different cakes and pies and cookies and bagels and uh, pretzels and all of that. I'm going to have a bunch of different types of products. So what we'll do is take advantage of our menu system. We'll take advantage that we will have a top level with all of our products, for example, and then sub-menu items. A menu item only about cakes, only about pies, only about cookies. And therefore all 20 of the cookies will be on that page. All 13 of the cakes will be on that page instead of all 55 of everything together on one page. Yeah, there was that setting about categories which isn't, which isn't as good. That's This is what I'm talking about exactly. We'll use this menu to really uh, organize our, our content and make it easier for people to find what they want. So that requires some setup though. We need products, and they need to be categorized. Okay, step one. Step two is, then we need to set up pages to display the products. And then step three, add them to the menu. So let's do step two. We need to create pages to display the products. 
So I'm in the dashboard. I'm going to add new page. So just confirm here because all the screens look the same. Add new page. And I'm going to call this the same as my category. Cakes. So all cakes will be visible on this page, on this screen. It's a page with the name of cakes. And now, to display in here all my cakes, all the items categorized as cakes, now I use this little icon that appeared brand new after adding WP Commerce. It looks like a couple little credit cards. Click on that. It's the very last icon on the first row. What would you like to display on this screen? My cakes category. So this screen will then be populated with all my cakes. Notice I don't quite have a lot of the functionality about like I want them organized in a grid and all of that. That's set with the other sections, the other settings, premium upgrades and such. But I'm saying on this screen show all my cakes. A couple of other options. Number of products per page. I already set in my settings that I'm going to display three per page. But here, per product, per category, I can select this particular one is going to show seven per page, per screen. I won't do anything, but if I wanted to, I could. Sale products. But that's going to override what we said. In exactly. Page. It's going to override what we said in the main settings. And then sale products, uh, add all sale products, add sale product category. Okay, if um, if I had ten, if I had ten uh, cakes, and uh, three of them were had a sale price, I could then say here, don't turn it on, but you could turn on add sale products by category. So then under this page, I would show cakes, but only cakes that are on sale. If I turn on this first one, every single product that has been on sale, cookies and cakes and pies, all of them will be mixed together into this one screen to display on sale. So the only thing we're doing is we're just saying, on this page, show the cakes. We could show an individual product. Usually I don't do this. I've only got two products, but imagine I've got 40 products, 100 products. You could show an individual product on a page, which I really don't see too much of a reason to do that, unless maybe you've got landing pages or, or something. Yes? If you could have a separate page just on sale, and then you want to do products that are on sale, just default to a sale page? Well, you would do that via category. You would, uh, you would say no category, but then you would say, here, show all my sale products. And then premium upgrades. So, for example, an extra cool slideshow and other things. But that's the gold cart, which is not free. The only thing I did here was to, to select a category, so go ahead and insert. You're going to get what is known as a short code. You're not going to actually see all 20 of your products on screen here. This is that limitation about how does this, the design actually look. That's, you're shielded from that because this short code here, this little bit of code that is only meaningful to the WP Commerce plugin, appears. And when we actually publish it and see it, then it will translate it into the appropriate screen. So this is basically seeing our WP shopping cart plugin display products. Which one? This category ID 13. Remember, everything in WordPress really behind the scenes is a number in a database. So item number 13 in the database is, in my case, the, the cakes category. Yours may be different. It may have a different number. Don't worry about it. But it's, that's the number of your category. So we're saying display that category on screen. Uh, we don't need to add featured image because 
the products will take over that screen. So this doesn't really need much, although what you could do is you could add other sorts of design things, like before that you could add some text here, and that text will display and then your products, or I suppose also after the products you can display other text or pictures or bullet points. So you have some capability, but just imagine this is a black box. This thing will get automatically converted into all your products. So you don't have that full customization. But the point here is that we are creating a page to display all cakes. Let's publish it. This is step two. Step one is create products and categorize them. Step two is create pages and put categories in them. Step three is show those categories, uh, show those pages in the menu. So where do we find the menus again? Appearance, menus. So here's our menu products page, etc. Before I go on, I hate it that it's called products page. These are not products. These are cupcakes made with love. So instead, I want to change this, uh, this little triangle. Click on the triangle to the right of the button, and right there, navigation label. It doesn't have to say products page. It can say shop. So now on screen, it will have the shop text. And then to get fancy, Go to getemoji.com and get a little graphic. Get one of these little graphics and put it into your menu so it's not just text. This is optional, of course. But um, do I have any cute emoji that I can use for my shop? So if you find any of these icons, you just select them. They're, they're like text. Just select them and copy. And then I can paste it into my menu. Look at that. I'm going to have a little icon. I suppose you can do it like that and simply have the icon, but unless the icon has a meaning that everyone understands, they might not get it. So that was over from getemoji.com. That's going to have that name. And what I want to do actually is I want your account and transaction results, but actually I want those to be a sub menu item of checkout. I, I don't want to clutter my menu too much. So I'm going to do it like this. There will be the shop button, click the down arrow, and then checkout will be visible. And then that will have a sub-item, transaction results in your account. You won't need to see them just yet. But the big idea here is I've got shop, and under the shop then I'll have my category of cakes, and my category of pies, and category of cookies. So that means we need to add the page, not category here, that's categories of posts. It's going to be because we created a page of cakes. So we've got a page that holds my product category, cakes. So it's a page. Add it to the menu and then put it inside of the shop section. So if you make any changes to this menu, which we did, remember to save and then visit site.
Well, we're going to take a break soon. Let me let me check yours during the break. If you visit site, then you should see that your menu has been updated. You get the little icons, hopefully. Um, if the if the icons don't show up on your browser, that's okay. Not every browser shows them, uh, but when they do show up, they look kind of nice. And drop down menu, and I only see checkout and cakes under checkout. That's got its own sub menu, and if you click that, then there's transaction results and your account. So I don't have to see them until I need to deal with them. And then when I click on cakes, it only lists my cakes. I'm in the cakes category and I've only got one cake, birthday cake, but here then if I had 10 cakes, 10 products in the cakes category, they would all show up on this screen. Gold cart. It gives you a few extra abilities. As for nicer, it is going to depend on your theme. So right now, it's just a pretty boring theme. <clears throat> it's the official WordPress 2015 theme. It's pretty boring. But uh, if we activate the Canyon theme, which was a nicer one we've got hanging around there, it should all look nicer. And then also we have the ability to edit it with um, with with the code. Question. You're creating a, a um, category page here. Yes. Cakes, cakes is a category page, and then on the menu we um, create a hierarchy of uh, cakes under the product or shop page. Yes. What is the um, on the edit cakes page, for instance? What is the page attributes? How does that figure into this? Do we have a parent child page? Is it seems like the cake page is a child page to the shop page. Only visually, because visually we see cake as a child of shop. But internally, technically, the the cakes page is not. It's outside of it, it's not a child page of anything. For the functionality wise, I don't think there's too much of a difference to either have it as a child or not. I think it's up for the user and also for uh, SEO. Maybe it's useful to have cakes as a child category for more organization, which the search engines do favor. So when we are editing that cake, I, I never put it under any child or parent. I suppose we could have edited it and put, here, put it under product or shop. And again, I don't know fully the pros and cons of doing that. I sort of suspect that it might be useful because of SEO concerns. And it's an easy fix. I can go back to edit the page, put it under products, and it's it's fixed. It's one quick internal change in the database, and it's done. And that might help out my SEO. It would, it would show up in the URL. Right? It would. Oh, that, that's the thing. So notice right now, before I made the change, WordPress slash cakes. After I um, make the change, it'll have the extra products page. Products page cakes. So the URL does change, and that uh, is one of the signals that the search engines look at when they uh, when they rank you and such. So the, the big difference between that, well, that does ultimately say cakes, and that says cakes. But this one furthermore says that it's in the products page. So that might be more useful, or the search engines might see, well, it's cakes, and that's it. Okay, good. If it worked, let's take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about variations and other cool advanced stuff. Uh, variations uh, is often kind of confusing for beginners, 
That's why I want to take a break to cleanse the palate, and then when we come back, we'll talk about variations, because now I want to deal with cookies. I'm not going to sell one cookie at a time. I'm going to sell them at three, six, or twelve sized batches. It's 2.50. Let's come back at three o'clock, and when we do, we'll look at variations and more.